All right, so we'll go from here. I'm gonna share my screen. I have a small presentation. And uh, and then we'll just build off of this and, and see where we can get to. So, um, so like I said, this is 3D modeling. I have a soft spot in my heart for 3D modeling with regards to, uh, it kind of helped me to keep my first job. And, uh, <laughs> and so I kind of always come back to it. I also like the idea that it allows you to create, it's, uh, it allows you to create without, you know, I'm a cheap guy. So without physically cutting wood or building a product, I can still make something um and and make it available um because i hate to waste stuff and and this one you can always alt undo and everything like that so uh it is we're going to skip over this because you've probably seen those five examples i said it is uh directly referenced in all levels of the math curriculum so i just pulled up the math curriculum here one of the documents and within the geometric geometric characteristics 3d and 2d is referenced all the way along uh, and then if we get down into positions and transformations, there's some stuff in with regards to that in there. Oh, Mike Auger joined us, man. Look at that. So you guys, you guys are truly blessed today to have Mike in on this. Yeah, yeah. And Mike, yeah. Mike, I'm recording this, so just uh, inside no, voice or outside no. voice. <laughs> outside voice. Yeah, you just want comic relief. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's directly referenced there. So what I did is I then went hopefully one step deeper. I think that we can all accept that that what we do in mathematics definitely uh, definitely touches on this and enhances uh, or, or affects what we're doing. And potentially we can make some some builds in there. The problem then becomes is how do we how do we teach 3D modeling without taking away from the curriculum, right? Without taking time away, how do we get our kids doing 3D modeling? And, and I would argue the easiest way to do that is to start building it into lots of courses. And by doing that, we can suck a little bit of time out of each of the different courses to help the kids develop and learn, get those basic skills, and then they can start applying them in the other one. So, so these were some of the ideas that I was uh, that I came up with, and you guys are going to see some some common sites in here. Um, this was one from a teacher up in Calgary. Uh, it's about community building. And I know that we do some stuff with regards to building communities uh, and whatnot in some of our grades, but essentially he created a platform that then they could 3D print and the kids could then go in and modify each of these little cubes, or sorry, each of these little squares, they were the same size, and eventually build up a larger community. So he's got some uh, some models laid out here. And this actually came from a bigger lesson from another developer, uh, another uh, modeler and stuff like that. And they actually went a little bit further, uh, pulling in some models already and pre-creating some of these models and some of these tiles to create their little communities, right? So the idea not being about uh, the modeling, although that's fun, we can import that. The idea being is how does a community go to together well and does it make sense to have you know this big temple right in the middle uh right next to say a factory or something i i don't know what's there we have a factory right next to looks like just a, a tree in a park or something how does that all go together and what effects would it have so that's the idea what one of the other things that you'll probably see as you we go through is a lot of this stuff is based on 3d printing and I don't know how to get away from that. Uh, and I think that that's important. And I think I have ideas on, on, on how you can incorporate that. This lady developed a fraction game. So essentially she created these discs, the discs one eight, one quarter, one half. Uh, it looks to me size wise, they're all the same diameter, but size wise, one half is twice as big as one quarter, which is twice as big as one eighth. The idea is you stack them into this little um, guy and then see if you can put the happy face over the front to make it all nice and flat. So as we're talking about equivalent fractions, you know, these add up to one whole. How do we add it up to one whole with these different fractions? So could our students create a game like this and, and what would those look like? How would we do that, right? And then again, we do have a 3D printer. Palliser does have a 3D printer. It's currently on load on loan to uh, one of the three people in here. And if it's not you, then know that it's Heather. So 
<laughs> and that's a okay. We do have one that's available for loan that we can fire up. And I'm hoping to do some uh, a 3D printing kind of PD opportunity in the fall and get some schools more into it. Or we can also look at shipping the files down to us, us printing them and then getting them back up to you. Because I think that that's another way that we can sort of promote this. Watching it print is super cool and having that developed piece is really neat. There's a bridge building one. I'm gonna jump over that one because I think that this one's kind of cool too. The Aztec, and you know what? I always forget to do this. I'm going to drop the link here so that you can fire through on your own and not just look at mine in the chat window. Um, the Aztec and mine structures could be adapted for, and, and I'm not a social studies guy, but it could be a, a, adapted for some of the uh, some of the cultures that we study. And essentially the kids get in there and they start to create these little models of the different locations and then kind of build based on what they know, what they can do. The other nice thing is that there's tons of these out here. So the kids, if they can't do Machu Picchu or, or one of the big, uh, I, I'm not a big uh, Aztec or Mayan guy, but uh, let's throw it off to Greece, right? If they can't do the, uh, the Parthenon, they can find a model of it, print it off or something like that, or adapt it into their 3D structure that they're modeling on there and their, their world, their base, there's something like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff you could do. Um, and then this was kind of a cool one. I'm gonna leave that one here. That's grade eight social. Yeah, cool. All right, perfect. Um, this is a neat one too. And this is really based on 3D design, specifically 3D design and breaking. I love this idea. It fits really well with what I talked about yesterday with coding, which is the decomposition of that computational thinking where you take a problem and you break it down to its pieces. So this whole idea here is, can we create a train and what is consistent between the different train cars so that we're not developing everything every single time, but we're figuring out, we're decomposing a, a train car and then figuring out how many different options we can create create out of that. And essentially they break it down into, you know, the basic pieces, the kids develop those pieces and then they use them to develop other cars, right? It's the same thing. You're still gonna have your chassis, your wheels and your connectors on there. It's just the top end that's a little bit different. So, so I like that idea that it's teaching another problem solving skill uh, inside of there and there's a whole he's got a whole project that goes along with that so so those are, are some of the places that I think you can fit uh, and again the tricky bit is is how do we invest the time into into learning this so this one I will not uh, I will not be uh, shameful about I totally stole this from uh, the Autodesk people they have another one but it leads to all of their uh, links so Instructables and Tinkercad are two Autodesk uh, properties out there that that absolutely are wonderful properties and I, I use them all the time. Um, but there are other ones, SketchUp, Vectory are the other two that I'm gonna look at. We've been looking at a bunch of models from Thingiverse. Uh, I will say I just got myself a, a 3D printer about a month and a bit ago for those of you who haven't heard yet. And I've been like downloading models and printing off models uh, from Thingiverse and making mistakes and it's been awesome. I'm having a ton of fun with it. It's cool to see and then right here the idea of canvas but the idea of We are not asking our students to go straight from an idea in their head to an idea on a computer screen um, But to have a design notebook of some type right right away. Have you sketched it? Yes, boom come over, right? We want to get that not yet then let's get inspired and find something and then go and sketch it I think the most important thing that we can do and in any of the 3D modeling that I've done, either with younger students, I did a class uh, this past year, um, I wanna say it was with some grade five students and uh, and then I've done stuff in the past with, with high school kids and everything like that. The biggest mistake they get is they just kind of approximate and they're dragging and dropping and stuff never looks right because we don't know how big it's going to be. We know what it looks like in our head, but we don't have an idea of the dimensions and everything. And it's not until we stop and sort of give a really gross, ugly sketch of it, but we drop, oh, I think this should be 10 millimeters and I think this should be 15 millimeters or something like that. We draw it out, then boom, it's awesome and we can get that. And I mean, you can do that um, using... Um, Canvas, um, 
but you can also do that with just papers, right? And then we move on from there. So, so the three that we're gonna look at are Tinkercad, SketchUp, and Vectory. Those are the three that I recommend. Tinkercad is ground level, basic, easy. Um, I, I say easy, sorry, ground level and basic. It is simple to get into. Uh, all of your shapes are predefined for you and then you have to change the properties of them, which I really like. There's some starter lessons in there and there's also some class moderation tools. So you can create a class in there. This I put this link in here because we use Google Classroom. There's a recommendation to not use their, they call them Trimble. Trimble's the company that owns it now, uh, Trimble classes. Um, but instead, use Google Class. And there's a way that you can still moderate those students and, and give them access to that. And then I also said that there's some Minecraft and Lego connections that I kind of want to show you because I think that this is a draw for students as well. So this is it. The nice thing about using Tinkercad and getting your students comfortable with this, there is a piece in here on circuits. So you can actually build circuits and, and like simple, simple machines inside of here. But when you're looking and I wanna say it is grade nine for sure and, and maybe grade eight that you do circuits. Um, you can do a lot of that stuff and have virtual circuits. You can have resistors, capacitors, different types of batteries, different levels, different motors and things going on. It is very neat. Code blocks is uh, using coding to do 3D modeling. I did something with this with kids a little while ago uh, and it was good. I enjoyed it, it was fun. Um, I don't know that that's what I would start, but maybe that's just me. And then there's some lessons in here as well. So inside the three designs, designs is where we're gonna hang out, hang out inside of here. And I don't have, let's see, let's go to the gallery and see what's available because I don't have any really good ones. But here's a nice looking spaceship. We can grab it. We can say copy and tinker. It's gonna create a copy of this for us in our Tinkercad. So any changes that are made to ours aren't gonna be made to the original. We got a nice little piece there, right? So now you can see, here's our platform. It is fairly straightforward. We can, using the box up in the top left-hand corner, it gives us the different views. So when we're talking about perspective views, and I know that that's one of the things we do in math, we talk about the front view, the top view, and then the right side view. Now this is a fairly complex shape, so we're not going to probably see something like that, but we can do some simple shapes and look at front and you can click on it and it'll zoom to there. Then we go, okay, we wanna see the right side and it'll give us the right side and so on. And we can get those views just by moving around. So that more conceptual person that doesn't have the, uh, the, uh, the bit in their brain that allows them to take shapes and there is a percentage of us that don't and kind of twist them in their head and look at it from different angles, you can do it physically. One of the things I recommend, and we'll just go through some really quick tips with regards to Tinkercad, always put your ruler down. Whether you use it or not, put that ruler down. We're just gonna click it in there. It gives us some different pieces. So when we click on a shape, it's gonna tell us how far from a fixed point that shape is. It's gonna tell us how wide that shape is. We can get that in other places, but it gives us a nice indicator right here. Um, so this is, this 35.87 is how wide it is from ed, edge to edge. Here's how long, 106, and then here's how tall, 16.39. It also tells us how far this is from the base um, of the platform and then from that fixed point. So then when we start to remember, we talked about precision early on, when we start to orient different pieces, so we bring in a cube and then we wanna put a hole through the middle of that cube. We're not just guessing and checking, we can say, okay, the middle of the cube, we know is 25 and 25 from that in millimeters, let's say from that fixed point, we can take the middle of our cylinder and put it in that exact same place and precision matters, right? Okay, so the entire reason that I kind of pulled this one in here to show you guys is because this is where it starts to get kind of cool and a bit engaging for kids. We talked about the idea of 3D printing this, but most of our kids have, let's say Legos. So if you click up in the top right hand corner, the Lego button, it will give us, it'll start to build up the Lego shape that we have. And the kids can then take this and build the Lego. These are up top here. This is one like very chunky designs. If we go to the most fine of detail on designs, 
It'll take a little bit longer, but it'll build it up. And now they essentially have a plan for building this ship. So they can design in here. They can, even if we don't have a 3D printer, they can take it, create that Lego model, and then look at the different layers from it. So there's layer one. Again, this is on an angle, so we're gonna see it different. And slowly build out those different layers and then create that ship 100% based on what they're seeing in here, right? So kind of a cool model, kind of a neat idea. The other one that they can do, and, and my kids love this, and I won't I won't argue with you, I love it too, because I'm a, I'm a little bit of a Minecraft fan here, but you can also do the Minecraft bricks, and same idea, we can go really fine detail. We can look at the different, it tells us what kind of shapes are being used, and then we can also go through and sort of move this around and check it out. I don't believe we get to see the layers in this one, um, but we can see the build out of that and see what it looks like. So it can give us an idea as we start to build us in the Minecraft um, world there. So, so I kind of like this one, super good for our young learners, extremely easy to get into. Uh, if we go, I'm gonna go back to my original here. And we'll just grab any of these. This is one based on that, that city project, I was trying to create a platform that maybe I could share out. Oh, we could go with that one. That's not a big deal. We're gonna, it's called Tinkering. It gives it these really goofy names, Fanatic, Biggery, Crunk. I have no idea where it gets these names from, but it's kind of cool. All we do is we grab a shape and we bring it in and drop it on there. And now if we had our ruler, so like I said, you should always have, we could figure out where the center of that shape, but notice it gives us all of our properties of that. So if all of a sudden I wanted to make this, here's the one that makes it higher. Let's say I wanted to make it a hundred tall. I can adjust it on the fly. If I wanted to make this a hole, right? Instead of being a, a, a piece here, you see I have two holes on the outside on either end here. I could turn this into a hole. And then by grouping these two objects together, Instead of it being a hole, we get a hole in the middle. So, so essentially, you take your properties, you start to build it off of there. We're going to get rid of those. And we'll delete this guy. But you start to build out your properties, start to make it all together, and life is good. Uh, the last one I'll share, and there's a whole bunch in here. And in fact, there are some built ideas. There's characters in here, so some different pieces so you can model. You can bring in your Astro Bot and create a model off of that. So adding different pieces to them. There is um, some additional shapes down here, no big deal. Here's some more circuit stuff in here. There's some printables from these Smithsonian ones are pretty good, but there's some cool dinosaur ones you can bring in. You can favorite and stuff like that. Uh, the last thing I was gonna say about this guy before we go on is you can also lock it. So if I made this and I knew I didn't want the students to change that, I would tell them to ensure it's locked. I would let them make that copy. I would share the link with them so that they could make their own copy and let them know that they need to lock that. Otherwise, it's not gonna fit in with our bigger platform because we're building a city off of all of this. So um, yeah, we'll leave that one right there. SketchUp, SketchUp is one of my, nav navigatable is obviously not a word. SketchUp is, is a favorite for me. I've been using SketchUp for a long time. I think it is a brilliant, um, piece for doing construction projects. I used it, I just built a, a little workbench in my garage. And what I did is I created my workbench first on SketchUp, sketched it all up with two by fours. And then I knew exactly how long my two by fours needed to be. I had it all. Obviously I don't have my garage built in there yet, but you could place it in the exact place on the wall so that it, you could see how it looks inside of there. The idea being is it's just simple to use. We. SketchUp can be found uh, at edu.sketchup.com. This is where you would find the actual one. Actually, there's a workbench, super simple, right? Like I didn't do anything fantastic behind it. This is where you could get to it, but we also push the uh, app out. So if you go into your Chromebook and your students go into your Chromebook, they're gonna find SketchUp for schools on there. I have that opened already. And essentially what it is, it's the exact same location it just looks like a separate app. It pops it open in a window, so it kind of makes it look like an app. Connect it with your Google Drive. All of your files are stored into your Google Drive. 
There's curriculum inside here. There's also curriculum in Tinkercad. There's curriculum inside of here to get your kids going or get you going on it. If it'll open up, we'll see. Um, let me jump back to this one. Maybe I have two instances open, so it's not liking me. There we go. This is the one name tag. Uh, my sons were working on this the other day and had one done that said fart. Obviously, they're boys within probably about 15 minutes and they were done. Right. Uh, it kept them busy for 15 minutes. But there's some ideas and stuff. SketchUp for schools is essentially as powerful just about as our full end one as the desktop one that you would download on Windows before. So it is super, super useful. It's a it's simple to use. It gives you a slightly bigger platform. Tinkercad is made for a 3D printer type environment. So your platform is not massive. You're looking at probably about 200 mils by 200 mils. You can make that a little bit bigger. You can adjust it and you can play with it. Tinkercad, or sorry, SketchUp gives you uh, essentially infinite. So. If you work in feet and inches, feet and inches. If you work in meters, meters, millimeters, so on, so on. We'll go meters. Uh, it always starts out with this dude. I know this guy has a name. I can't remember his name. I always just click on him and delete him. And then I build off of there. It is very basic in that your shapes aren't there. But what you do is you start to use some of the other tools. So you use extrude to raise it to a specific height. And I know I talked about being super, uh, super precise. You can push pull, this is the extrude tool. So we can push pull, where is it? Oh, there we go, we could pull it out or we should be able to push, there we go. I'm looking for that red dot back to the edge. And when I move it around, you'll see that that is gone. And so we can start to create the different pieces there. We can take a single block and sort of edge it down. We can also take a block and move it out. If I want to be more precise with this, I'm gonna set my starting point and I'm gonna sort of draw it out. And you see down in the corner, it gives me the dimensions. So if I know that I want the dimensions to be 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters, I just type those in and it's going to give me that precision but I have the flexibility to move around a little bit different. There is some frustrating factors with regards to using this um, because you sort of, you'll see that, you know, now it's a green square there, it's a red square, depending on what wall you're on, stuff happens. Sometimes you'll change something up top. Maybe let's say we delete it and the whole roof goes away. And so now our 3D structure is sort of changed and we have to maybe get that back in. And there's there's different characteristics, but it is super simple. Uh, there's a whole bunch of properties and materials that we can apply here. I just wanna see materials. So if we grab onto a shape, we can say, give that a, you know, a brown finish or a purple finish or whatever we want. And you can also get specific like wood grains and everything like that. So, so it's super nice for creating these. And then you do have that 3D model that you can export, you can capture a picture of it for including in a document. So Heather, you, you like the idea of the Aztec and Mayan piece there, right? Exporting one of those features as a picture that then could be bring, brought into a document that the kids create and, and type on uh, might be an idea there as well. So. Uh, and the last one, and I am honestly going to say this is the one that I've spent the least amount of time with, is Vectory. Vectory is uh, a free one. It is a, sorry, it's a paid um, modeling program, but there is a free version of it. And I'm still waiting for these education plans to go live. I haven't seen that yet but it is one that is used by some industry people. So the true industry people are using desktop computers. They're creating massive models. They are using Windows Base. They have backups out the wazoo. They need the processing power. But you know, for somebody who's just getting into it, they can get one of these smaller platforms and at a cheaper price for them just to do stuff. There is a free one to get started working with. There is inside of here tools on how to get going, how to start, how to use it. This one is really designed for like 3D modeling 
and uh, with product based, not really construction based, uh, and also for bringing it like creating characters and everything. Inside of our templates here, there's a lot of like really photo realistic 3D models in here that are very cool. So these could be brought into your animations uh, if your students are doing animations or something like that, if they're doing some type of game development, um, some really simple bits there. I should have loaded this page beforehand because I'm waiting for, there's a little character in here. My kids are obviously streaming Netflix and everything else that they're doing, but there's a cool little character in here and it's, it's a, just an animated or it's just a figure that somebody developed that you can use. You can grab any of these guys, any of these templates and bring them in and then start to edit them up. As I said, this is the one that I am least comfortable with because I've spent the least amount of time playing in here. Uh, it's definitely on my list of things to do and to take a look at. Where's our little guy? He's in here somewhere, I know it. Oh, maybe not, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's on another page. Sorry. I will find it. That'll, that'll be my goal here. Um, this one's fun. This one's good though. So here we go. I'm going to keep going. I'm just, I wanna be cognizant of the time and what we're doing here as well. So where do you find your ideas? The ideas that uh, I've been finding, create education. It's a website. It's out of uh, the UK, I believe. They have a bunch of, yeah, British and Irish schools. They have a bunch of free ideas and everything on there. You do need to create an account to look at some of it, but there's some I, some really cool ideas. Essentially, start Googling 3D modeling, K-12, to the subject level you're looking at. Dremel Digi Labs. I put this one in here because Dremel is the 3D printer that we use, that we have one of. Uh, it's not the one that I have at home here, but they do have some interesting ideas. They do have some stuff going on in here. Print Lab, I found these guys through Create Education. There's some interesting stuff there. These are the ones that excite me though. Thingiverse, you'll see that all of these came from Thingiverse. MakerBot, who is, uh, they're the ones who started Thingiverse, um, is a 3D printer manufacturer. And they started this and essentially, Thingiverse is a repository for 3D models. So if you go in here, these are all 3D models that you can download and print. Um, some of them, I had one, I printed one for my son. It in total took us about 20 hours, I wanna say. So some of them can be really big, really long. Uh, others, and some of them are multi-parts and stuff like that. But their education section, allows you to dig into some ideas and filter by subjects and stuff like that and get ideas for what could my kids create or can I print this off for my classroom, right? And sorry, I keep coming back to printing. I know we don't all have 3D printers, but what can my kids do with regards to this? So that one, this is, a, I'm a big fan of Thingiverse. Uh, it is buyer beware. So it is just people developing out there. Tinkering is one I just ran into this morning and it looks pretty cool because it is about design thinking and inside their education section, they do have some challenges to get kids going. And then they do have some uh, stories. I would say I was gonna go to resources, but they do have some stories uh, with, with motivating ideas on what other teachers are doing inside of there. So um, I gotta spend some more time looking at that. The other one is Instructables. You'll see back on this page right here, I have, Thingiverse and Instructables on here. And I'm gonna come back because this should be a link as well. Oh no, that's to the original idea, sorry. Uh, I thought I had one more. Um, but inside of Instructables, this is like maker's zone. This is where people come and, and post their instructions on how to make tons and tons of stuff. Teachers can get a free account. I recommend that if you're doing any type of making, any types of crafts, any types of that, you grab that free account because you don't need it, but it walks you through some of these step-by-step -step and gives you some additional ideas and, and some applications for how you can use it in your class. These guys, Edgerton Center is out of uh, MIT and they just have some cool ideas. Uh, one of them was these custom coins and medallions. And that's what I was kind of play, trying to play with. You know, get your kids. We, we talk about badging. 
get your kids to start create some of these, send us the files, we'll print them off and then get them up there. And you know, you could create some, uh, some badges or coins to hands out, hand out to kids, you know, student of the month, student of the week or something like that, or get them to create them even better and, uh, and go through that process and then, you know, print them out again. So, um, there's tons of ideas, like I said. Okay, last one. This is my last piece, and this is my last pitch for 3D printers. These were a few other ideas I had on here. Oh, I did have the coins or medallions. Personalized rulers. If you have your class list at the beginning of the year, think about what you want to be on that ruler. Well, we want it to have a protractor on one end. We want it to have a straight edge. We want it to have something else in there. And we want the kid's name on that. Well, you could create the base for that in Tinkercad. Let the kids go and customize it with their name on it. Again, locking down the portions you don't want them to change. And then if we have access to a printer, if you get them to me and give me enough time, we can print them out and get them to you, right? This is an interesting one I read, a pilot for a paper airplane challenge. You know, how far can the paper airplane go? What if you had to design a pilot that went on there? How does that change everything? I like this idea, collaborative art installation. They said each cube has to be, you know, whatever size, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And on the face of that cube, you need to, uh, just like the city, have something that depicts you or depicts your, you know, the story that we just read or something like that. And then it all goes together. There's tons of stuff on rock formations. There's a really cool one that I was just looking at based on clouds that was kind of neat. Uh, this one I thought was very neat. Popular 3D printing design challenge going around at the moment is the Pringle Chip Challenge. Students design a container big enough to carry a chip. These containers are then exchanged by post, we could use our courier, no charge, with students from another school. Whose chip will arrive without being crushed or broken? Cool idea, I like that. So, And there's some examples here of designing bedrooms, classes in town. So, I mean, sorry, again, I I'm, I'm always apologize at the end, three minutes over, but I am available now for any questions and stuff like this. I The idea behind this is just to pique your interest and see what's out there. Those three tools I think will cover, you know, 95, 99% of our classrooms and the ones they don't cover are the ones that are already doing 3D modeling, maybe paying for some CAD program or something like that. Um, so I think that gets you started and then just start exploring and finding the tools. I, I hope, uh, I hope this motivated you a bit. Heather, I hope that you get in a little bit deeper with that 3D printer. Um, I will have to come and take it back from you at some point, but for the time being, model it and uh, see what's going on. So I'm gonna stop presenting. If anybody has any questions, just fire them in here. Mike, if you wanna tear me apart at this point for uh, umming and awing the whole time, you go ahead. So I will stop the recording and I will stop the streaming.